Oh, here she is. Just got done welding. We're letting it uh, air cool right now by these fans. There she is. Yeah. I think that's going to do it. If we have to add more, we will, but I bet you this is all we'll need. finish. Not that bad. Looks pretty smooth. I mean, this is roughing, so, you know, you're not going for surface finish, you're just trying to cheaply remove metal quick. Look at the chips. <clears throat> Here's our chips. So you see some of these are, let's see, there's some I don't know. That's what they look like. There's our end mill. Ooh, that's hot. This car bed was kind of dull from previous use. I didn't change it because I really didn't want to change too many things at once. This thing definitely liked RPM there. That's uh, It was less chatter. It was quieter. And we definitely got a better surface finish that time than we have before. Which is not surprising. They say you're supposed to run these things fast. Okay, so we're doing 80% uh, higher than our base. So instead of 550 millimeters, which is 22 inches, we're going up to about basically 1,000 millimeters. So it's almost double. We'll be feeding roughly 40 inches a minute. And our RPMs are also going to go up by 80%. I'm going to do that real quick. Let's see what the RPMs that gives us. I think this is about 4,700 RPMs. Uh... Yep, that looks amazing. That's for roughing, that's uh, pretty awesome. Quick, see what, how much our, what our material removal rate is. Alright guys, well we just did the math on our calculator. Running the 80% higher feed and 80% RPM, and also correcting for the, we weren't, we thought we were going to do 0.42 inches, but we ended up doing 0.38, because that was too aggressive. But after correcting all that and running it through, these chips are coming off at 0.5 cubic inches a minute. 
So half a cubic inch a minute of material removal rate. And that is awesome considering this is just a little PM25 with a, well, a motor of the large ass variety, but you know, you can see the motor's like as big as the machine kind of. But, uh, and you know, it keeps getting better as we were speeding up. We only went up to like 4,700. This will go to 6,000. And I'm guessing that as I go faster and faster, it's just going to get better. Because that seems to be what's happening. The surface, the machine, you know, this is how it's always been. More RPM, it chatters less. And you get better surface finishes. And then the tools usually last longer too. At least as far as how much metal they remove before they die. And uh, so this is good. So the next step, we got to take all this apart and play with the bearing preload until we get that happy but uh yeah it looks like the motor the actual motor upgrade itself is doing what we hoped and better uh, our braces fix this it's not it's not flexing anymore or it's not flexing enough to matter our belt stayed tight we didn't notice any belt slippage i don't see any rubber up here belt looks to be fine so we do have some vibration coming from this like we said well uh so far this is working well so i do think we're gonna pay somebody to make us a custom part that'll fix that but this is doing what we intended we bumped our rpms up we bumped our feeds up we're getting uh better surface finishes we we'll probably should see longer tool life and the machine's quieter so basically everything's working as expected and the only issue we were really anticipating was that these bearings would overheat and they are so now we'll address that all right, guys, that's going to be it for today. We're going to knock off early. It's like 5 or 6, yeah, 6 o'clock. So, as you can see, we got the spindle back apart. So, inside of here, that's the race for the upper bearing. And down there, there's another one in this area for the lower bearing. Well, I took it apart. Bearings look fine, which, I mean, I replaced them, and I haven't hurt them. They look okay. They look great. But uh, this thing was getting too hot. And I tried adjusting the preload and taking the preload off and... Uh, <clears throat> didn't seem to, I mean, loosening the preload helped a little, but after that, it never got better. It basically just stayed the same. And so what we're thinking is, it's all the grease. There's just, uh, I probably packed these between 30 to 40% grease. And I saw some had slung out, so I may have just had too much grease or something. But, uh, what I think we're going to do is we're actually going to convert this to running oil instead of grease. So basically, instead of having a roller bearing that's packed with, you know, 50% air, 50% grease, these things will be running in a light, light mist of oil, which it's going to take some work, but I don't think it's actually going to be that bad. So if you look in here, here's your bearing, which is roughly where my finger is. And the other bearing is down here. So basically somewhere in the middle, we're going to drill a hole. And what we'll do is we'll drill a hole in the side of this. So when you install the spindle, <clears throat> when this spindle goes back up here in the headstock, we're going to drill a hole through this and it's going to intersect a hole in here and we'll basically tap this and put a fitting and then we'll uh y'all have probably seen those little misters they actually have a hose that looks like this but you can use them for minimum quantity lubrication where it basically uses an air blast and it picks up a little bit of coolant or oil or whatever you want to spray we're going to buy one of those and set it up on a probably set it up on a timer where it all happens automatic but basically say every 10 minutes it'll kick on for a couple seconds blast some air through here with oil mixed in and the great thing is by injecting it in the middle it'll pressurize in the middle which will force air and oil up into the upper bearing and force it down into the lower one of the problems people have is uh, people that go with oil systems typically they do a drip and it drips in here and what happens is when you're running the machine the oil drips into the top bearing and it spins around and you know the upper bearing's happy but that oil kind of hangs and it doesn't drip and fall down and catch the lower bearing. So what happens is you end up having the upper bearing over oiled. The lower bearing can't get oil. Or, for example, you have to oil the piss out of the upper one so that some of that oil will fall down and catch the lower. So I think the air mist setup will be better because it'll be able to force the oil in every direction. And I'll, I, I'm going to research this tonight, but a quick Google search shows that that's a pretty common way to oil stuff. <clears throat> and it's very reliable. So, uh, so that's cool. I think that's what we're going to do. So that's going to be it for now. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a project, but I think this thing's winding down. This motor, I took some measurements here. I'm going to model up a part or a pulley or something. Eh, maybe I should have brought that pulley. I don't know. But, uh, we're going to, we're going to work on that too, because I want to get a custom piece here made. And, uh, 
we'll get these bearings going and hopefully that's about it. This machine will be fairly capable at that point. All right, y'all take it easy.